Jason and welcome to Catfish Not Feelings and it's pretty cold right now it's 48 degrees it's freezing and uh, I imagine the water is gonna be worse but we'll see but right now it's the end of February and it's actually a white white sea bass season is coming up and for those of you who aren't familiar white sea bass is kind of one of the uh, most prized spearfishing uh, fish around here you know, they're very uh, difficult to find. They're very elusive. They get up to like around 50 to 60 pounds. And from March to June is the season. And what I mean by that is the white sea bass, they tend to swim out deep during the uh, cold winter months looking for squid to eat. But during March to June, they come up close to shore to spawn and they can get anywhere to about 10, 15 feet. And so that's what we're going for to, uh, these next few days. You know, I, I've never caught a white sea bass before. I might have seen like a small baby one, one time, but I figured this might take a couple of tries, you know, and this video might, may or may not be long depending on how long it takes me. You know, I kind of I wanted to make this video to kind of document my journey of finding my first white sea bass. So that's the goal with this video. But here in the uh, Southern California spearfishing community, you know, white sea bass are one of, those, one of the most prized fishes there is out there. They get up to almost 60 pounds here. And what makes them so elusive is that they have a very sensitive lateral line. So all fishes but most fishes have lateral lines and that helps them detect movement or change in pressure in the water and so with the white sea bass their lateral line is more sensitive so it takes a lot of it takes a lot more skill to learn how to be quiet in the water and that's kind of different for us because as us humans you know it's hard we're not used to being in the water like this but that's I figure it's gonna take some skill practice and maybe a little bit of luck but yeah uh, I'm out here in Palos Verdes I feel like when it comes to white sea bass there's really not one specific spot where they're at anywhere where there's kelp forest I figure that's where they're gonna be and yeah I'll see you guys in the water let's go hopefully we get our first white sea bass always forgot to mention my gun of choice for this for these next few dives is my ripe 110 Euro gun. Big shout out to my friends Cynthia and Jose from Spear America for helping me find this one online used. Helping me put on this reel, helping me put on new line or new rubbers and new line. Big shout out to those guys. But it's 110 centimeters. I think it's perfect for a white sea bass. It's got enough power. Let's uh, put it to work. Let's go. So this is the reality of spearfishing for white sea bass. Water's cold and super murky. This was probably my fourth or fifth dive into the journey and I finally ran into my first white sea bass. I was just kind of scouting around and I see him from the murk. And I took aim, I hit him, but the spear didn't go all the way through. hear that initial like line pulling out from the white sea bass oh, and you can just hear how disappointed I am. But it's all part of the learning experience. I think in my case I needed to get a little more power or I needed to get closer. So, so I lost a 40 to 50 pound white sea bass and I am hella depressed right now. That's, that's gonna haunt me for a while. I'm not exactly sure what quite happened. 
I hope I got that on footage though, you know. Um, on the bright side, that was my first time seeing a white sea bass and that, that was just so crazy, you know. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. I think, I'm pretty sure that fish was like 40 to 50 pounds because it was way over the like the legal minimum size limit, which is 28 inches. But I, I saw it, right? And I was like, whoa, that's, that's a big ass fish, you know. That's how you know it's pretty big. But yeah, you know, I I, I swam out a little farther uh, than normal. I know it's an outgoing uh, tide right now, so it's transitioning to low tide. The water level is getting lower, so it's hard to slide. It's hard to spearfish through the kelp, and I figure that you know I'm gonna try something different, and I want to swim past the kelp line. So I swam past the kelp forest. You see it over here. That's the uh, kelp line, and I swam past that, and that's where I saw that white sea bass. I I think I saw a few other small ones, like really small ones, maybe like 20 inches or something like that. Because I did see like a yellow tail. That that could also be like a barracuda. Barracudas have yellow tails too. But yeah, that big one was oh my god! I'm so depressed. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I was at the surface and I, you know, I didn't even have to dive down. I was just at the surface and. In the corner of my eye I see like something coming out of the shadow you know and the water isn't super clear today it's kind of murky and you can probably see maybe like like five, six eight feet down and from the corner of my eye I see something coming out like emerging from the shadows and I'm like oh shit you know and I take my aim and I hit the fish right like I, I hit the fish but for whatever reason, my spear shaft didn't go through all the way. So, like, I hit the fish, it swam off maybe like five or six feet, and the line just went slack. And that's that's when my heart just dropped because I kind of just knew. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> you know, I'm like, shit. Oh, uh, but yeah, I think on the bright side, that's my first time seeing a white sea bass and I'm hoping I got that on footage. But, you know, they're definitely out there. I just need to go get my gear checked and I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm pretty depressed still. So. I'm, you know, I'm, I might try again tomorrow if it's a good day, but I know from today, next week, um, conditions are gonna be too rough to dive and I don't know when the next time, when's the next time I'll be able to get out here. But they're, they're out there though. But my journey for white sea bass still continues. Well, we'll get them eventually, but just being able to see one, I think it's a very good confidence booster on my part because my, it means my hunting skills are getting a little better. You know, that means like I'm quiet enough or I'm stealthy enough where I'm starting to see white sea bass now. And it's just a matter of just going, keep going at it until I get one. That's the uh, that's the plan, you know. The season they stop spawning around like mid June, so I still have some time. But for now, like between now and then, I only have time to die for like two hours at most. I'm kind of busy with my my life and like career and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep at it, and we'll. We'll get that white sea bass eventually. We'll get them. All right, so we're in day, I don't even know, 10, 12, 15 for white sea bass hunting. So it's like two months later or three months later from that last clip you saw. But I saw my second white sea bass and my heart sank again. You know, the water was so clear and this was my first time seeing one so clearly. I could see all the stripes on it. Unfortunately, couldn't make the turn quick enough to take aim at it. I should have tucked my gun a bit more and you know, turn a little faster. But here I am, I missed another chance. And I was hoping to maybe see more around this spot, but that was the only one I saw for today. So months later pass and spawning season ends. 
But for white sea bass, you know, you can find them year round. I've heard stories of people catching them during winter and whatnot. And during this trip, we just weren't expecting to see any white sea bass. It was just a surprise to us. And I think it was just right time, right place, right day, you know. Immediately getting to the water, it's murky, like the way the sea bass like it. And there were schools of smelt everywhere. Not even like 15, 20 minutes into our dive, me and Alex both saw a juvenile white sea bass that might have been fairly legal. So already, that's a good sign. And so we kind of split up, explored as much ground as we could. And here, I ran into a big school of cargo. I was really tempted to shoot one, but I figured I'll just, I would just wait. Maybe something out of the murk would pop out. And you actually see um, there's a juvenile white sea bass that kind of that's kind of swimming next to the school. Not in the school, but a couple of feet away from it. But I was just kind of here waiting, hoping that a white sea bass would try to eat one. And there he is right there, that little juvenile with the stripes, that's a white sea bass. Uh, you see anything so far? Oh, really, a big one? I saw a small one right here. Really? Hey! I tried to take the shot, but then it was swimming so far. Oh, yeah. I was like, dude, I need to take it, or it's like. Yeah. It's like so fast. Yeah. Did you end up like shooting it? Or trying to like take a shot? No. I need a second band, dude. Oh, yeah. I think Unless you're like really close. Yeah. But I'm so, like, I don't think I've ever seen this many white sea bass in one dive before. I've seen three. Yeah, I saw um, so the first one was like over there. Yeah. The second one was a little bit bigger, but this last one that I just That's for sure. Really I saw a second one here, but it was a juvenile. You can see the stripes still. Yeah, this one was like straight, like, like a goat. Yeah, this is a spot, dude. <laughs> they like working water like this. Yeah. yeah. So Alex and I gave it another like 20, 30 minutes or so diving. You know, we weren't planning on doing a long dive, and we weren't planning for hunting white sea bass. It was kind of a weird dive trip because we found ourselves surrounded by a lot of bat rays. You know, I haven't seen this many bat rays before, and it kind of tripped me out a little bit. And when we were handling the uh, white sea bass, you know, at some point we were actually surrounded by them. They were really close to us, and it was kind of trippy, but it's a cool experience. Eventually, Alex and I regrouped and we decided to head back because our dive time was coming up. And on our way back, you know, we still kept seeing schools of smell everywhere. And these guys are big too, maybe at least like 6 to 8 inches. And Alex and I eventually ran into this big school of smell. And without a word, we just stopped. You know, we both had a gut feeling that if we just stopped and just floated there, Maybe something was going to pop out of the murky waters. And we were right. Landed my first white sea bass. Oh! White sea bass! I got him! I got him! Holy oh, shit! Immediately, this fish sprints to the kelp and gets itself tangled up. And it was really hard looking for it because the water is just so murky down there. And I'm thankful my buddy Alex was there to help me out. Should I start pulling it up or should start, I check? No, start reeling in your line as we go towards it. Okay, gotcha. It's still fighting. Yeah, I think the uh, so the kelp, it's, it's wrapped around like this way yeah, and then like yeah. this. Yeah. So I think he might be underneath us or behind us. my gun, my band, so I don't pop it off that Do you see it though? No. Yeah. Was that you pulling on it or? That was me. Okay. Just wrapped around this kelp right here, like pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go down so like cut it. Now 
देखो तो इसके white sea bass right here my buddy alex really couldn't have done without him 
but he measured out to be around maybe 32, maybe 33 inches. Legal size is 28 inches for reference. Probably around like 20 pounds, 15, 20 pounds. But oh man, it's been so long. Been looking for these guys for a long time. Had a lot of heartbreaks, missed a few. Tell us but, about what happened. Yeah. With your, uh, with your shaft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so after I shot him, he tangled himself around the kelp, right? And I was cutting the kelp, trying to get free it. Ended up cutting the shooting line, and I'll show you guys. Ended up cutting this on accident, cause you know, red blends in when you're, like, you're down there. But uh, luckily he was tangled around good enough. And then he was tangled good enough, swam down, found him. And then I put a, oh, she's still twitching. <laughs> <laughs> Stabbed him in the head, killed it. And we ended up just cutting off the monofilament on the, on the shaft. And that's where we brought him up. But yeah, I really couldn't have done this all, buddy. Buddies are important. <laughs> Safest way possible. Right. Catfish right. not feelings, guys. Yeah. All right, so we're back home. So I got home a little later than I wanted to. So it's a little sunny right now. But we got the white sea bass right here. Oh my god, look at this. Been chasing this one for so long. It's not a big 40 to 50 pounder, but you know, it's. I think it's really good for my first one. We uh, I waited out at the spear fishing shop, Spear America in Costa Mesa, and this guy turned out to be 13 pounds right on the dot. And I, um, I think he's 36 inches actually. I thought he was like 32, 34. I wasn't looking closely, you know, earlier, but. He's uh, for sure 36 inches. But yeah, we're not gonna let this fish go to waste. He's been on ice for a couple hours already. I'm gonna start filleting. And yeah, it's gonna feed a lot of people. Really grateful for this opportunity. It's such a crazy experience. And so the next goal is to get a 40 or 50 pounder. But oh uh, yeah, let's gonna fillet these guys. Let's fillet this guy. You can see I, uh, Trying to show you the shot. Shot um right here. Spear went through like near its uh, gills out here. And then when people say they have soft flesh, I can definitely see that. You know, like this hole is pretty big size. And so I think it's really really important to get like a um, slip tip for a bigger one. But for this one, I shot it on my 90 centimeter Pathos roller gun and it worked like a charm. It was perfect. It was, um, wasn't too far. It was perfect range. Hit it at a pretty good spot. Got all this meat right here left. But yeah, let's get uh, filleting this. The color on this guy, it's beautiful. I'll show you guys. I think out in the sun you get you definitely see like that iridescence color that purplish hue on the top a little bronze color yeah a little ghost of the sea beautiful tail it's actually pretty intact still i could make a trophy out of this i'm not sure but we'll we'll, we'll see later but yeah nice teeth right there Definitely a predator. This one has a yellow mouth. First time seeing that. But yeah, these guys are called the Great Ghost. Got these, uh, what's it called? The lateral line. It's very sensitive. That's how they sense you in the water. This guy for sure knew I was in the water. You know, most of the time they do. But yeah, like most predator fishes, they got big eyes like that. Best, but I'm gonna keep the head too. For, uh, 
process. I'm gonna be eating good for a while. Look at that. Ooh!